Hello everybody, welcome to another video. We start this one off with a cyclist in a chicken shop. Yep, now there's something I thought I'd never say in my lifetime, a cyclist in a chicken shop. As you can see, he's got no lights. He's wearing dark clothes. Has he got any rear lights? Let's have a look at the rear. No, he's got nothing on the rear neither. Now, normally I would be blaming the parents for this, but he's probably gone to the chicken shop for his parents. That's the way it works nowadays, isn't it? Now, I'm just going to show you this from the front camera first of all, just to show you the layout of the road. It's a 20 mile an hour speed limit. You can see it on the ground there. You can see road signs as well up to the left there. 20 miles an hour speed limit. We are looking at this car behind us, this Burke in a Merc. Now this is shot in November, the 8th of November this was. Now here comes this Mercedes. It's 20 miles an hour speed limit, mate. I don't think it should be given a pass. What do you mean by that? What he's saying, he's saying, 20 miles an hour speed limit, and he's doing that. So I'll speed it up a little bit now. It's still a 20 mile an hour speed limit. And you've gone to traffic, mate. Good job. Good job. Top driving. Yes, a very sarcastic clap by me. But as we go over this speed bump, it turns to 30 miles an hour. Now, why are you over the line as well? Why do you need that little bit more space than anybody else? And we're coming to that roundabout. That famous roundabout. And will he indicate? Oh, he will. Will he give way to the right? No, will he fuck? Will he fuck? So notice down this road, there are no speed limits, no speed limit signs. It is a 30 miles an hour speed limit down here, but there are no signs at the moment anyway. You'll see in a little while in the next clip what I'm talking about. Don't need to pull out left to turn right. Oh, here he goes again. Now, this is a 30 mile an hour speed limit, but he's still going over that. So, we're on that same road now. We're in February now. We've, so we've gone from November to Feb, and it's still 20 miles an hour, obviously. There's schools down here as well, so and it's been 20 miles an hour down this road for quite a while. Um, and as I say, when you get past that speed bump, it goes to 30 miles an hour. Every gadget in my car tells me it goes to 30 miles an hour as soon as I hit that speed bump, pretty much. So, I don't have a problem with it being... 20 down here because it is quite tight and there are quite a lot of kids around most of the time so we get to the 30 mile an hour speed limit but the 30 mile an hour speed limit now only goes to that mini roundabout there literally to that mini roundabout so you can go for 10 miles an hour more to here because what they've done is when i turn right here like i did in the previous clip this road now is 20 miles an hour see the signs this is all the way down into Sutton now. So if you're local, watch out for this, just in case they start messing about with a speed camera that's further down the road. But I do have a question here to all you bus drivers. When they do this, take 10 miles an hour off the speed limit, do they change the timetable of the buses? So further down the road, even right into Sutton now. This used to be 30 miles an hour speed limit, but it's obviously changed. This was 30 the day before, trust me. I, I used this place all the time and it was 30 miles an hour. 
but we're having a little look at this car on the right hand side here. Something's parked in its lane. So it's just going to move out. Fucking pulled straight across. No indication, just because there's a car parked there. So now we're looking at the Prius to the left hand side. I don't think it's a professional driver. I can't see the yellow sticker, but it drives like one. There's a late amber there, and that's a late red, isn't it? But like I say, I couldn't see the yellow circle. It's been pretty cold the last few days. We've had some frosted up windscreens and all the rest that goes with it. And here we are. We've got this Audi coming towards us. It obviously cannot see anything to its left hand side, but then it's an Audi. They don't see anything from the left straight ahead or right, do they normally? Now, as you can see, we've got a red light here and there's a crossing there right in front of us. But we're looking at parenting in this one. I shouldn't really judge, but over there to the right hand side, that dad there should be on the other side of that girl. He should be roadside. And that continues all the way through your life. When you give your daughter away, you are on that side when you walk down the aisle. Now look at that girl. She presses the button. He doesn't. He walks out. And then drags his daughter across the road on a green light. Great parenting. Well done, mate. Now in this clip we're looking at this middle lane and unfortunately the camera doesn't do this justice of how fast this girl was going down it. To just go to a car that's waiting at the traffic lights. You'll hear me in a minute, I was quite annoyed with her because she's got a child on board in the chair in the back there. And it doesn't really do it justice of just how fast this girl was driving. You really are a fucking idiot woman aren't you? As I say, I was a little bit disappointed in her driving. And you'll see, just to the right hand side now, her car hit the brakes and then bounced back up. That's how far she was going to get to the Range Rover that's just waiting at red lights. You really are a fucking idiot woman, aren't you? Now, as you can see, she has to be in front of me. And to do that, she has to get too close to the car in front in obviously bad weather conditions. But here comes the dangerous part. We're coming to a roundabout. There is a left turn only lane. What lane is she gonna go into? And where is she gonna go? Where are you going? Shit driver again. Now, if you're familiar with this Tesco's, when you come out, if you see someone in that lane, you are going to pull out thinking that they are turning left. She's only going to get away with that so many times before it goes horribly wrong and with a child on board as well. As you can see, the weather ain't any better on the motorways. I'm pulling out because that is the lane I need to get onto the M25 going right. This car to my right hand side wants that lane as well, but there is a car that's to the right hand side of that van that also wants the lane. And look at the braking distance they all give each other in weather conditions like this. Why do people drive like such numpties when it's raining? They get even worse when it's raining for some reason. So we're still on the motorway. The car in question isn't on the motorway just at the moment. It's on a slip road to our right hand side as we're looking at it. And you can see that it's quite busy. You can see how the middle lane is really busy with people hogging it. I'm actually moving out to overtake something rather than moving out to let people honor this junction because I don't have to because they've got their own lane. But that's the car in question, the one that's just pulled out and is just overtaking that lorry there. As you can see, I was overtaking that lorry to my right hand side that's just moved over to the further right left hand side normally uh, for fuck's sake I don't know what I'm saying here anyhow this car behind me has pulled behind me I'm overtaking this van and I want to move back inside as soon as I get a fair distance away from it I will move back in but this car has other ideas it wants to undertake me and when I finally move over it moves back now we're gonna go to the front camera and see what the fuck did it see to actually go to try and undertake me there? Where can it go? 
Why do people drive like absolute numpties when it rains? It's crazy. Now regulars of the channel will know I'm well out of my normal zone being out here. If you have a little look at that road sign over there, East Ham, Ilford, really? So I might not know the area that well. I do know it a little bit from previous jobs that I've had, but not like the back of my hands where I'd know where I'd normally work in uh, leafy Surrey. But it doesn't matter. I know how to read road signs like that one I've just pointed out. I know that I'm going right up here. And I know that when you want to go right up here, you go in the right hand lane and you basically just wait. But it doesn't matter where you are in London, you will always find a queue jumper. And there's the fucking little munchkin right behind me now. That is the queue jumper that will not wait, that thinks it's special. There he goes. Ah, oh, let's give him a cheer. He got in front of two cars. Good job, mate. So in this clip, we're looking at the Range Rover and the lights up in front. As you can see in a second, they go to Amber. Now he's braking. I'm thinking he's stopping. He's still braking quite hard as they go to red. He ain't stopping though. So I'm turning right here. All these cars to my right hand side are going straight on. It's pretty simple, isn't it? I'm starting to call these Dorothy moments. This car coming up now is a Dorothy. What would you do with a brain if you had one? It doesn't want to turn right, it wants to go straight on. But it got behind someone that's turning right, and now it's stuck. What a bloody idiot. And notice it got behind the white van, the same white van it would have been behind if it had got in the correct lane. So pointless exercise. Now in this clip, this is all about pedestrians. What would you do in this situation here? There is a lorry that's got to reverse down this little weenie alleyway. So it's got no choice but to do what it's got to do. Everyone knows what it's going to do, except this car in front of us. It doesn't seem to know what it's going to do. And the pedestrians, obviously. Now it's got to reverse round there. Now, you can see the pedestrian. Why not just wait? I know it's a pavement and all that sort of stuff, but show a little bit of common sense. Do not get behind something that big that's reversing. And another two do it as well. Well, I know what I would have done. I would have just waited there for him to do that manoeuvre. Make it a lot easier for him. Now, we're a little bit closer to home now. We're in Croydon, an area what I want to get out of pretty quickly. It's not very nice. Now, this junction is renowned for this happening every single day. We're all turning right up here, but as soon as you turn right, there is a left as soon as you get round over the bridge. So if you want to turn right and then left, you're in my lane that I'm in now. If you want to turn right and then go straight on, you're in the lane next to me, to my right hand side. But if you're a queue jumper, you go into the right hand lane as well. Like this guy behind me. Now he is a professional driver, but I can't see that yellow sticker in the front, which means he's up to no fucking good. It is a trade I know pretty well now. And I know that when they haven't got their yellow stickers on the front or the back, they've either sold them or they've cloned the car. So he's up to no bloody good, as well as being a shit driver as well. You know what lane you're supposed to be in, don't you? You're just going to queue jump. It's so obvious you're going to cut right across everyone now. There we go. Oh, he's a professional driver. 
So we give him a little round of applause because he got two cars in front doing that. And I'll just show you the, the road layout here as to he knew what he was doing. And I did check it to make sure that it was a professional driver. And it was. It's just up to no good. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.